What's up everybody, it's me, ya boy. At the time of posting this, the new Zelda Hyrule Warriors game is finally out. I am, shall we say, just the teensiest bit of a Zelda fan. So I decided to do a build based around Breath of the Wild to celebrate. So here's a build from one of my all-time favorite video games, the Breath of the Wild Stone Talus. Let's get to it. The materials used for this build are going to be cheap and simple. Some dollar store floral foam and a kitchen knife. My personal preference is actually a basic craft knife, but I wanted to pay homage here to a barge craft. Jokes aside, this build was much more natural than many I've done. I just took blocks of the rough size for the section I was working on and started cutting. I kept a few reference pictures of the talus up as I worked. Mostly, this was just a lot of shaving things down till I got the shape I was looking to mimic. I've never attempted sculpting by reduction like this before, but it was surprisingly simple. To paraphrase a master, just remove the parts that don't look like they're supposed to. After working my way through the simpler bits, like the body and hands, I moved on to the smaller sections, scaling them to fit with the big pieces. This step took a lot of test fitting, eventually with some toothpicks to hold things in place. I also went back and made minor adjustments to the body and the hands to get things to fit the way I wanted. Once I was happy with the general shape, I checked his sizing against the base I was planning to use and started texturing the individual pieces. For texture, I used dollar store spackling. I've had great luck recently using glue to add texture to a variety of squishy foam projects. For example, my kitchen sponge trenches. So I wanted to see how well a porous but rigid foam would take texturing. Short answer is very well. That'll really show through in a minute when you see me painting him. After texturing the individual pieces, I carefully hot glued them together. Be cautious when working with glue and foam, and use test pieces beforehand. Super glue, for example, partially melts the kind of foam I'm working with here. Next up was building a base to pose him on. I started with a styrene circle of the approximate size I wanted, added another one on top, slightly offset from the first, and started cutting and shaping. I used some of the offcuts from the talus itself in this step, and alternated between gluing sections on and cutting areas off. I just kept back and forth like this till the shape looked dynamic and fit the pose I'd made for the talus. Spackling served as the matching texture here, and a few toothpick sections and hot glue attached the talus to the base. Next up was priming with a mix of Mod Podge and black paint, and he was ready for painting. My base coat was just a darker gray, followed by splotches of some brown. Stone is generally not just plain shades of gray, and mixing in some brown with base coats and inks and the like can really make your paint job pop some more. I followed this up with a heavy dry brush of a medium gray, and then a light gray that really starts to showcase the texture. I wanted the mineral cluster on the back to have lots of interesting shades in it. So I started with metallic black and layered on some variety from there. This meant a few metallic pens and then a few different shades of paint, overlapping interestingly and highlighting edges for the most part. The main body of the talus also got some irregular coverage of both brown and black inks to get some extra depth. The minerals got a blue ink for the same reason, and to tie everything back together, after letting the inks dry, I went back over the body and base with a light gray dry brush again, and a gentle silver dry brush on the minerals. At this point, the talus just needed a few extra details. I pressed and glued a few pieces of aquarium gravel into the mineral cluster to act as the gems. I also ground up some simple Italian herbs for a cheap bit of flocking and super glued that into place as well. The gems got a layer of Mod Podge to help keep them in place, followed by a metallic blue and a blue ink. To give the grass that Breath of the Wild colorful zing, I inked it darker and then dry brushed the grass in progressively lighter shades. Finally, I finished this with a very light stippling of a pastel yellow for a more textured highlight. The gems each got a tiny silver highlight on the top. The base got the black sides touched up, and the talus was good to go. Zelda is one of my favorite series, which made this quite an enjoyable project. I also learned something interesting about how I craft with this build. Most of my terrain projects, I take an item and use some unique feature or property of the item itself to base my build on. Looking back at some of my more ambitious creature builds, though, I seem to start with the end in mind instead. I do think there's definitely value to both types of work process, but I do wonder what kinds of terrain I might make if I took the same approach towards terrain that I normally use for monsters. Which brings up an interesting end question. What's your process? Do you go from idea to build or end product and work backwards? Let me know down below. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Stay safe, sane, and crafty out there, and I'll see you in the next build.